Hello everyone, my name is Ben Edie. I'm the online media manager of ModernAnalyst.com, the premier online community for business analysts. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar titled How to Slash Data Analysis Project Times in Half. Today's featured speaker is Julie Hyland from Dell Software. And the webinar will last approximately 60 minutes including the Q&A session. So make sure to submit your questions in advance using the questions feature of the webinar software. I'd also like to say thank you to Dell Software for sponsoring this event. And at this time, I'll turn it over to Julie to get us started. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining today. My name is Julie Hyman. I'm a product manager here at Dell Software. Um, and today, uh, I'm going to go over uh, productivity, how to slash data analysis project times in half, and, and what our products can do to help you gain more productivity uh, when you're dealing with data. So let me just start with a little bit of an overview. Um, I'm going to talk just a little bit about the products that I represent at Dell, um, which is the total Toad BI product suite. Um, and then I'll talk about Toad Data Point, which is the product that we're going to focus on today, why we're going to focus on that one for productivity and, and data analysis and um, slashing your times in half. Um, and then we'll go directly from there into top time savers and some hidden productivity gems within the product and how we help people get it. Um, but before I start, I just wanted to uh, give kind of an overview of how I approached this webinar topic. Um, when you talk about slashing times in half for uh, you know, data analysis, what you're really talking about is how we can make uh, folks who are working with data um, more productive. And there's different ways that we could have approached this webinar. One was to pick a, a particular you know, use case or story and dive deep into that. Um, instead of doing that, though, I opted to go sort of, rather than you know, picking one thing and going deep, I, uh, I opted to go wide and show you all a bunch of variety, of variety of ways that we help you save time. And to get the most information and make sure that I was hitting the right points on that, I actually surveyed, did a fairly large survey of our user community and picked uh, the top productivity uh, items that they had pointed out were helping them using our product. So that's the approach I'm going to take today. So we're going to talk about a lot of different things. We're going to go a little bit in depth on each one, but won't dive deep into any of them. Um, but I do have some resources that I'm going to bring up here in a minute so that if you want to, on your own, pursue any one of these in more depth, I'm going to give you the tools that you can uh, use to do that. OK, so first let's just talk a little bit about the products that I represent here at Dell and, uh, and why I focused on Toad Data Point for this particular topic. So Dell has an agile business intelligence solution called Toad Business Intelligence Suite. Um, and this suite actually incorporates three different products um, that are uh, working together in a solution. Um, there are two desktop products. One is Toad Decision Point. Um, and this is all about uh, data discovery and visualizations as you're graphing and your charting and um, different kinds of analysis that you're doing when you already have the data set that you need. Um, and the other one is Toad Data Point, which is all about querying, you know, getting to the right data, querying that data, merging that data, and prepping that data, and then some analysis on that data. And the last part of the, the suite itself is a server install piece that we use to collaborate between these two desktop users where you can publish data and pull data. You can also use it as a connectivity point to different data sources in your environment. Um, so the suite working together, I think, um, has a lot of uh, productivity uh, bonuses to it. But rather than focus on that, I chose to focus on just data point. Um, and I'm going to show you why here. Of all the products within the suite, actually let me back up a little forward. Of all the products within the suite that we have, Toad Data Point specifically has the longest history on the market. So I just did a quick little timeline here of how long Toad Data Point has been out, uh, just so you can get an idea of its maturity. Um, it was first released in August of 2007. We had some different milestones between you know, 2010, 2011, we introduced professional editions. 2012, we introduced the full suite, so the other products I just talked about. Um, and then I wanted to point out today you know, how, uh, how relevant a uh, data point is to the market. So right now, we have over 22,000 users of to a data point, and those are users who have bought uh, bought to data point um, in over 3,500 companies across 88 countries. And actually, I think that that's actually an understatement, because for much of its life cycle, uh, Toad data point was given away with Toad Oracle purchases. 
So if you are familiar with databases and DBA uh, work and or you're a developer, you've more than certainly heard of Toast and Oracle if you're working in that environment. A uh, hugely popular uh, Oracle productivity tool. Um, and so every time you purchase Toad for Oracle, you've got a copy of Toad data point that you can use as well. So those users aren't included in the numbers here. These are just the users that are specifically targeted to Toad data point products and purchase that. Um, so the point here is just to give you an idea that this is being widely used in a lot of different organizations across many different countries. Um, and I wanted to point that out because I'm going to go through some quotes um, from different users um, as we talk about productivity. And I wanted you to get an idea that this is used in lots of different industries for lots of different purposes. Um, and I think it's done, it's successful in that way because it's such um, a good all-purpose tool for data analysis. Okay, so that's why I want to back up here and kind of talk a little bit about what is to a data point. So at its heart, Joe data point is a cross-platform query and data integration tool. And it simplifies data access, analysis, and provisioning for anybody working with data. So data access is our connectivity layer. Analysis are all the tools that we uh, give you to uh, pull apart that data, understand that data, transform cleanse that data. And provisioning is really getting that data out of your desktop, your environment, out to the users that were originally requesting it. About 75 to 80 percent of our users in our sur that were surveyed indicated that their primary purpose in working with data point was to get data for either from one environment to another, and we'll talk about that and how you do that with data point, or from the back end system getting an ad hoc query request or reporting request out to the users. So we see our data point user as the person that is working with the data uh, on the back end and provisioning it out to the business or working to get it into another system. There's sort of that middle point uh, between where the data where it sits today and where it needs to go. And so really we have a couple of uh, highlighted areas here about our ability to access you know, the end data source, and we'll talk about that. The ability to integrate data sources when you need to, and the ability to provision all that out to your environment. And then we have uh, productivity tools that really automate and uh, streamline these workflows, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So let me go here and talk first about uh, some resources. So I know that when I sit through webinars and I, I learn about new software or new techniques, um, typically at the end of that environment or that software, uh, someone tells me how I can get this software um, or how I can um, learn more. I like to do that at the front because I think it's nice to have this information in front of you, especially if you, know, you can't stay for the whole webinar or something in particular sparks your interest. I know people are excellent uh, multitaskers today. So I want to make sure that you are aware. Uh, first of all, there are trial versions of Toad data point. It's the full version. It's either a 30 or 90 day uh, trial version depending on where you go. I believe if you go into Toad world, it'll be a 90 day uh, trial as, as, as opposed to Quest or Software Dell. Um, but you can go ahead and grab a trial version of our latest release of the software. And so you can install that on your desktop, and then you can look at the, the productivity uh, tips that I'm showing you today, and you can actually follow through with those if you've got it installed super quick. So I want to make sure that you're aware three different ways of getting the same, getting the same thing. You can go to quest.com, code data point, uh, software.dell.com, products, code data point, or Toad World. And I'm going to talk about Toad World here. Toad World is our community site. Let me switch over really quickly to our Toad World site. Uh, ToadWorld.com uh, is our uh, Toad community site where you can interact uh, with other Toad users, whether it's Toad for Oracle or in this case Toad Data Point. And uh, we're constantly refreshing the site with blogs and videos and how-tos and wiki entries, uh, just trying to keep um, our community informed about how to use the product and, and different uh, tips and tricks. And then we also have a really robust forum on this site where you can go out and you can actually interact with our development community. They're on this uh, pretty much 24-7, uh, just monitoring this forum and answering questions and working directly with our users. Um, it's a huge benefit to being part of the Toad family uh, that you have this kind of support and access out there. So please take advantage of it. And here's where you go to get the trial. So you can get the trial from Toad World, and that's our community as well. Um, and then lastly, oops, 
I wanted to offer, I have uh, a tips and tricks guide to Toad Data Point that covers a lot of what we're talking to talk about here today and gives more in-depth information. It's about a 35 page uh, uh, PDF. And I can give this to you, I'd be happy to send it to you. I provided my email here, uh, julie.hyman at software.dell.com. So if you're at all interested in getting that uh, PDF, please just send me a quick email, let me know that you attended the webinar and you'd love a copy of that, and I will get it to you right away. Okay. With that, let's sort of jump into the top time savers in data point. Um, and I'm going to start with the basics in data point here. So the biggest time saver across our board of, of users that we have that, uh, for our users is the connectivity. Okay, so what we're really talking about here is a single tool that you can connect to nearly any data source in your environment. So if you're uh, working with data today and you're used to switching tools to work with different environments, um, Toad Data Point offers you a single application that you can use to connect to all your data sources. And I tried to list out all of the data sources that we connect to here, um, and I, I haven't captured them all, um, but I wanted to give you an idea of how we connect to data sources and how we treat them. Uh, first of all, we have native relational database connectivity. And so this is where we're using the actual native drivers provided by the uh, database platform and actually using those to connect to the database. These are by far, I think, our fastest uh, connectors, and as well as they utilize the um, platform-specific SQL language. So if you're connecting to Oracle, you can use PLSQL. If you're, if you're connecting to Teradata, you can use Teradata-specific language uh, that are out there. So those are native connectivity. Um, along with that, we have uh, other connectivity. So first of all, we connect to file sources as well. So we still recognize that our, our customers constantly tell us that Excel is still a valid you know, data source uh, in their environment. And whether they're using it to hold filtering data, you know, things that they've created for filtering, or literally data sets that are being provided by the business, um, the ability to connect to Excel and query Excel like it was any kind of database and using standard SQL language to create Excel is uh, extremely important. And the same co goes with the common separated value files, CSV files. Um, we also connect to cloud sources. So if you have a hive instance that you want to connect to and you want to be able to map that um, so that it is you know, relational like and you can use SQL standard and ANSI SQL against it, you can do that with DataPoint. Same thing with Salesforce.com. So if your current use case is a log in the Salesforce and download data to, uh, to files um, and then upload those into um, different databases. You can bypass all of that and directly through uh, Salesforce using SQL. Uh, we connect to business intelligence sources like SAP Business Objects, Oracle Business Intelligence, Microsoft Analysis Services. So this is where we're connecting to obviously what aren't relational databases, which are typically cubed BI data or semantic layers, and uh, being able to query those with SQL. And then last thing I wanted to mention about ODBC connectivity because it is really robust. And so I've just listed here some of like the top ODBC connections that we see coming in from our user base. You know, Vertica and Greenfoam, the T's are certainly top. And we work, uh, either test those in-house or work with those different providers to test. We're also seeing a lot of uh, DB2 i-series, Postgres, Composite, and Informatica, Informix, OpenEdge. And the list here really goes on and on and on and on. So I tried to grab the top ones. Uh, to show you. And I put a little asterisk here, so this is what the customer base is reporting to us that they're using quite successfully. So connectivity is the biggest one. Um, and so again, a single tool that you can use to connect to all these sources. The second one is the visual interface. And here I'll, I'll swap over into the product and we'll take a look at it. Um, and for things like the visual interface and the ones coming out, I, I try to capture quotes from uh, different users uh, on their experience and how this really helped them. Um, and so for this particular user, uh, they work in a department where not everybody within their, their data analysis group is really proficient at writing SQL. Um, and so the fact that they can do it through a drag and drop interface um, is incredibly helpful to them. Um, and then also, a lot of times they're doing data discovery in the back end to understand database relationships. And so there's a database diagramming tool that's also very visual that helps people understand all the relationships between the data sources to make them uh, much more efficient when they create them. So let me switch over now to the tool. I'm going to actually implement what the tool looks like and how it actually um, interfaces with the user. OK, so this is Toad data point. 
Um, I'm just going to give you a quick little walkthrough of what these different panels are, sort of orient you to the product. So over here on the left-hand side, these are all of the connections that I've made in my system. So within my system right now, I have a Teradata connection that's active, an Oracle connection, an Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise. Um, I've also got some Excel spreadsheets, SMDB2 connectivity. So I've got a wide variety of connectivity here. Just to hit on this topic, to create a connection is really simple. You just go ahead and create a new connection, pick your connector, provide your information, connect, um, and then it's then added to your catalog over here on the left hand side. And then as I connect and move between these systems, I can double click um, on any one of these providers, make these my source, and I can go down into my object explorer and see all of the objects within that environment. So this is my Terra data system, here's all of the databases that are out there. Um, when I look at this uh, Quest app, a database, here's all my tables and views that I have access to. So this really gives me an idea of what's in that environment, and I can go ahead and continually expand this and explore any one of these items. Um, I can also go from here, this is my contact table, I can see all of the fields in that table, or I can even go into a, um, a database explorer mode where I'm actually looking at the properties of the database, current sizes, um, the columns within the particular table I've highlighted. I can actually look at the data within that table. It'll do a quick query for me, indexes, relationships, scripts. So I can see all of that information from the system. So this is my, my basic work palette, my connectivity, my object and data explorers, and then my main work panel. So let me start with the, the visual aspects, the database diagram. So a database diagram is where I can drag a table into this database diagram, and it will go ahead and explore all the relationships that are available that are built into the backend system. So very quickly, I can see all of the relationships that are out there, and I can continually expand the level of relationships that I want to expose um, in this diagram. So this helps me quickly understand you know, what it is that I'm querying out there. Um, from here, I can add notes. I can make, um, if there aren't relationships enforced on the back end, or I want to enforce different relationships, for this particular query, I can create them here. I can annotate. So for example, I'm just going to take one out here so you can see the value. Grabbing two fields, dragging them across, creating an annotated relationship. Again, not enforced on the back end, but it's in my diagram. So if I build queries off of this, I can actually see that relationship being enforced in my query. Um, so this is the diagram. This diagram, I've used it right now to expose Teradata uh, relationships, but I'm going to talk about the next top, top, uh, um, top time saver, that's sort of a time twister, um, is cross query. So I can actually drag uh, Oracle tables into the same diagram and draw the relationships that are across different platforms. And we'll talk about that more in a minute, but just to kind of let you know that's available here. Okay. I'm just going to start and send this to a query in my query builder and then we'll walk through the visual query builder. Okay, so I sent this to a query, so I grabbed all those tables that I had diagrammed and, and all of the relationships that you discovered and I put them into the visual query builder. And now it's just a matter of picking the fields that I want to query and adding any where clauses that I want. So this is a pretty easy interface for someone who's who's familiar enough with SQL to know how to query databases and what tables and fields and relationships are, uh, but maybe not as uh, efficient in uh, SQL to be able to write the SQL statement in the SQL editor. Um, I actually also find it just a time saver. This takes longer for me to do uh, in a SQL editor than it does in a visual query builder, uh, So, and I'm also a lazy typist, so this helps me a lot as well. Um, so you can go in here and add your where clauses may find a good I don't know where the quantity is greater than five, or I could choose to choose where the quantity is greater than a different column within my query. Um, so I can add all my work clauses here, and it's building out my um, SQL statement. Now I could uh, continue this and actually go ahead and execute the query here and get my result set, or if this is something that I want to then work with in a SQL editor, I can then grab all this, open it up in the SQL editor, and feel a little bit more comfortable free-forming maybe the more advanced pieces of the where clause. Okay. So those two things together, that visual diagram and that visual query builder, really help people sort of streamline their processes um, and get out of the mode of just typing everything through. So that was the, the number two time saver that people mentioned to us 
um, within the system. So the number three thing that came up um, was cross-query. Okay, and so cross-query um, is where we take different databases that we're connecting to in a data point, and we not only allow you to query them individually, but we allow you to query and work with them at the same time. So what I'm talking about here is a single SQL query that's referencing two completely different platforms, and when executed, brings back a single result set. And then two use cases I wanted to highlight here. We have this um, one gentleman, the top use case here, and his dilemma was um, he's dealing with um, pretty sensitive data uh, that includes social security number data um, in his system. And his data was spread across two distinct databases, and the common key between those databases was the social security number. Now, he did not need his social security number in his, in his extracts, right, what he was trying to analyze. But because he had to use them as a key, and he had no way to integrate the data where it lived, he had to then pull that sensitive data out of that database, put it into a third database, uh, and then query it there. Um, and that was a bit of a security risk that was very insensitive for them. And so uh, with cross-query, he can use, he can query across those two systems, use the social security number as the key, but never reference the social security number in the results set. And so that's a, a quick way for him to do the query. The query is faster because he doesn't have the processes of moving the data, but it's also more secure. Um, and then we also have other customers who are using it um, and gave us um, some stories about how they're using it with Teradata and SQL Server, or also Teradata and Oracle, and they're finding that they're able to work with those two platforms interchangeably a lot faster. So let's take a quick look at the cross query here as well so you can see how it works. Okay. So when we use cross-query, this is a, the proprietary sort of uh, functionality that we built in, in DataPoint. Um, and let me just do a quick little query builder for you so you can see a cross-query. Um, if I were to grab this contact table from Teradata, and we'll just pull all the fields in it, and then go out to my Oracle system, connect up to this, and grab, let's say, an address table. Oh, there we go. Come on. Here. I can drag this in here. Okay, I got the same one here. Okay. There we go. Let's grab the status table. Okay, so now I've dragged these in, I can see from the icons, this is my Teradata info, this is my Oracle info, and now I've got a cross-connection query mode. Uh, so now I, all I need to do is create a link between these two systems. So the address ID in this case is going to be the link. Pick the fields that I want. I'm creating a cross-query where I'm joining these two systems. And it's simply a matter of just executing this query to get the result. Now this is a really simple query that I've built, obviously, where I'm just joining contact and address. Um, but it could be as com a complex query as well. So we have users that are doing subqueries that have optimized it for different environments. Um, and so the, the heterogeneous um, functionality of cross-query is really quite robust. Okay? So you can see that I've brought back both of the a single result set with the data already merged together. And so if you're doing data merging, you know the steps are involved in using, usually pulling data out of different systems. So this is a big time saver from that regard because you can just drag and drop in the system. And again, I mentioned you can do it here. You can also do it in the database diagrammer and diagram the different relationships uh, that you want to record um, in the system here. And then save that diagram and also share it amongst all the other users. So each one of these tabs can be saved as a specific artifact, a data point artifact, that another data point user could then open and use as well. So cross-query is a big time saver in the system. Let me go to the next one. Um, this had to be the one that was mentioned um, a lot for us across a, a wide variety of different kinds of companies. And so the, the stories we got back from our users about automation are, I think, some of the most interesting stories. Uh, people are using automation to automate their queries and provisioning, absolutely. Some of them are using it as basic sort of business process flow uh, tool. Others are using it as light ETL tools. Uh, and so we'll spend a little bit of time on automation, but I'm also going to break out and show you some of the resources to go to, because it's a very, very deep topic. Okay. So what automation is, um, is it's a way that you can do any of the tasks that you do in, in DataPoint, and you can create an automation script uh, from those tasks, and then you can schedule it. Okay? And I've got two examples here, um, but rather than read them to you, I think I'll, I'll just 
uh, jump over here to the tool and kind of show you what this is all about. Okay, so the automation window is right here in uh, Tug Data Point. Click on automation. Over here on the left, um, I've got all of the different kinds of activities that I can automate. And they really do encompass all of the activities that are in, within the system, um, like selecting the file, executing a script, the import and export wizard, which we'll talk about, uh, visualizing and cleaning the data, which are also functions within the system. And then you've got also all sorts of other activities you can do as well, like copying and deleting files from your file system, or logging comments, or creating a zip file. Uh, or using an FTP system to either get or send the file. Um, and then you've got all these system activities, right, which go everything from looping through data sets, if conditions, um, sending emails with either attachments that you've created through the automations or other attachments in there, running outside programs. So if you're using other programs that are copying files up to SharePoint, you can call that from within an automation. So automations can run from the very simple um, to the very complex. And we actually have an automation a wizard that will help you walk through automation tutorial. Helps you walk through some of the more basic use, use cases so that you can create a basic automation and add embellishments. So a lot of our users are using um, automation to export data and email that data out to others. So if you are in a situation where you are constantly sending out weekly, monthly, quarterly reports, all of that can be automated. Um, one of the uh, quotes that I had on the, on the uh, previous slide that I, I didn't read through in depth was about a company that used to have people coming in at 4 a.m. to refresh reports for customers on the East Coast. Um, but now they don't do that because it's all automated. All of the refreshing of the reports are automated. And they've also automated an email um, and texting uh, reporting so that they'll know if actually a report didn't get refreshed for some reason, they'll be immediately emailed uh, or texted with that information so they can react wherever they are. And they don't have to be in front of their computer making it happen. Uh, so that was one of the automation stories that we had. Um, the other one was a, a, for a materials analysis lab in the semiconductor industry. You know, pretty complex stuff. They uh, have approximately 80 graphs or so that need to be run daily. Um, and prior to using DataPoint, they did everything in Excel by means of embedded database links and macros and batch jobs and using other smaller tools. So they had cobbled together an automation workflow using all these tools. Um, but now they do it all within a single tool of Toad DataPoint. Um, and so you can do a lot with automation. Um, rather than jump into the depths of it, what I was going to point out to you was on Toadmo in uh, we have a series of very in-depth blogs that um, our lead developer in this area has done uh, that actually show you all sorts of samples of automation and how to create it. Uh, so for example, one of the ones I like here is complex reporting. So this is if you have to send a report out via Excel and the user doesn't want just a single tab worth of data. They, they want multiple data on the same tab, multiple data sets including pivot tables where they want uh, different data on different tabs. All of this can be automated. So we have a three-minute video showing you how to do it, uh, as well as some screenshot examples. And then we, um, if you have any questions about this, you can reach out to Debbie Peabody. She's active on the our, uh, forums every day and ask questions. I know she's always interacting with customers with her automation scripts. So there's really, um, you're only limited um, in automation by what you, you know, what you can actually sit and, and, and figure out is a repeatable workflow. And then you should be able to do everything that you need to do in data point with automation. And we have customers have really great examples of that. So automation is really, I think, a key time saver when you want to cut your times in half uh, when you're dealing with anything with data analysis. And if you don't have a tool that's automated for you, I think you're really missing out because you're spending your precious time sort of um, in that um, shampoo, rinse, repeat, uh, workflow, where if you can automate that, then you can free up your time, you can then apply your brain power to more um, projects that need it more and more stimulating to you as well. Uh, and the one thing about automation that I wanted to plug uh, is that right now automation in Toad Data Point is, uh, is a desktop automation. So Toad Data Point is a desktop product. 
And so we created an automation of schedule that can use Windows Schedule on your desktop uh, to enforce that schedule of automation. Um, and so that means if, you're, if your computer's on, you're fine. If you turn your computer off, your automation doesn't run. Um, with the release coming out uh, next month, uh, mid-next month, um, we actually uh, have uh, the ability to publish that to a server. So you can actually do your automation, publish it to a server. The server owns it from that point forward, which is great for you because you don't have to worry about your computer being on, and great for everyone in your group because they can also see and potentially um, interact with your automation if you give them the rights to. Right. So if you're on vacation, they can troubleshoot it. If you leave the company, they can then own that automation going forward. Okay. Um, Local storage is also something that was reported. It's a favorite feature in DataPoint. What local storage is, is it is a database that's installed and embedded database inside uh, DataPoint. So whenever you are at a result set uh, here, and you want to quickly save this data locally so that you can do further querying against it, you can just do a, a send to local storage. And you can actually save it as inside an existing database, create a new database, create a new table, um, or you can do a snapshot. And what a snapshot is, um, it will not only save the results locally, um, but you'll able, be able to just open up that data later in your local storage database. Connection here. And you'll be able to right mouse click on that data in snapshot. And right mouse click and operations refresh the snapshot. So what you're saving in local storage is not only the data itself in a local table, but you're also saving all of the query information behind it. So that if you need to get directly to that data, you don't have to open up your query file anymore. You can just go to local storage, hit refresh and it will refresh. And this, um, this works with uh, queries just like I showed here, and also works with imports. So if you import it into local storage from an Excel file, if that Excel file gets refreshed with new data, you can just go into local storage, right mouse click, hit refresh snapshot, and it will rerun that import of that data into the system. So it's really helpful. Um, and just to note on local storage, it is embedded in data point, and it cannot be connected to from other systems. So we do that to make sure that we're not um, helping you create a, a data mark that you then have to worry about if other people are reporting off of it. Um, instead, it's something that's used as a productivity item within that data point. Okay. Um, import and export. So uh, data point has uh, two really robust uh, wizards, one for importing and one for exporting. And so if I am here on a data set, I can hit an export wizard, and I can export this data out in a variety of ways into a variety of systems. Um, and I can choose how I want the columns to export. This is a really helpful uh, way of approaching it. I can also save this as a template um, and continually add to this and uh, save all of this as a template that I can use over and over again. So the export wizard is really, really helpful. You could do it from a data set. You could also do it directly uh, from a um, table within any of the systems out there, again, any of the systems that you have. The one I wanted to show mostly, though, was the import. Um, and I wanted to just drive home a couple of use cases for the import. When I go in and I do an import into a system, one of the things that I could be importing is data from another database. So I could actually connect, for example, into my Oracle system here. Um, here's my Oracle system here. And I could actually write a quick query, you know, select star from contact now. Uh, this should work. We'll preview and preview this data. And I could actually export direct or import directly from my Oracle system into my Terra data system is my example here. Uh, choosing an existing table, a new table, truncating that, putting all of the information I wanted um, into here. We'll just do it like this. Uh, go ahead, I continually add to this import, and I can create this as a template. Um, and this is a template I can also be referring to in my automation script. So if I have constant imports that need to happen into like a data warehouse like Terabita, and this is the best, you don't have an ETL system that's handling that, this is a great way to do it. And so we have lots of use cases where our customers say that they, use, they get data all the time, they have to pull in the systems. Uh, and using the import wizard and um, 
the import automation um, is really helpful for them to do that. Okay. Next uh, is some of the hidden productivity gems. So I wanted to, besides the big ticket items we just talked about, and the automation and connectivity and cross-query and all of that, I also wanted to point out some of the sort of hidden productivity gems that I consider them in the system that really help you as you're working you know, every day in the system. And these are some of the items that I, I love and find myself going to all the time. And so I just got one slide here to kind of talk about them. Um, and I'm just going to show them off in the system to you really quickly. And again, these are ones that if you're using data point or interested, uh, if you get that PDF from me or you go out to the forums or you look at the help, you're going to get more information. But sometimes people don't know these things are here, so it's good to point them out. Okay, the first one is transformation and cleanse. Okay, so transformation and cleanse is where I can take a result set that I have. And if there's things that I want to do to this result set, like replace a value. So I'm just going to make some stuff up here so we can see it work. I'm going to replace the country U.S. with USA. Okay, and I'm just going to apply that. I can see that happening here. What I've actually got in my transformation and cleanse window right now, I've got the first thousand records or so of data here. And I'm just using this as a sampling of the data so I can see how the data cleansing actions that I'm putting in here are applying to that data. I can restore the original data. I can change it. I can apply it. And I can continually add new functionality here. So not only do I want to change the uh, country, but the system I'm going to likes the state abbreviation this way. So I'm going to apply that. And I'm creating this a series of cleansing and transforming steps here on the um, right that I can then work with. I can move them around. Um, I can create uh, other ones like filtering the data, the contact ID is greater than, I don't know, 100. Apply that. Okay. And all of these steps are then can be saved. Um, I can then save these or automate these so I can apply them over and over again to the data. And I think this is a real time saver. A lot of this can be done in the SQL, but then it's embedded in the SQL. And it's not saved as a step, a separate process. And also, some of it is more complex SQL, like finding duplicates. So if I know that the customer ID, the contact ID, customer ID, and address ID, these should all be my identifying fields, I can say, OK, where, where are there duplicates? And if there are duplicates, I just want you to exclude all but one. And that will be in my result set. And so it's going to continually add all of this to my um, transforming and cleansing steps. So it's a great way for me to kind of set up a routine of cleansing and transformation I can use over and over again. OK, that's one. Um, another one that I wanted to talk about is this idea of toned views. Let's see if I've got my SQL editor up here. OK. If I've got um, a SQL statement like this, and I run it, and it looks like it's going to bring back the right result sets for me. And see if I can send SQL back. Um, if I like this, this SQL and I want to save this as um, something that I can refer to over and over again, I can save this as a toad view. Okay, and I'm just going to run save it as a toad view, name it general view. So you can see what it is and open up the toad view manager. And what that's done for me is I now have this thing called demo view. That if I were to uh, open up a query builder, I can drag this item in here now, and I can query against it. So this is almost like, a, we used to call them virtual views, but I think that got confusing for our, our users. They're almost little views that then you can query against, right? So they're saved queries that I can then either query against here, or if I'm in the editor, I can query against in the editor. And I can drag and drop other tables into these, um, into these, uh, these new queries that I have. So I could, you know, for example, if I wanted to match up this data with order data, I could drag orders right in here and then just find my uh, matching link and query it. And so it's building a very robust SQL for me because it's going to also utilize not just what I put here, but the toad view. So the toad view, I think, is a really good productivity item if you have some base queries that you're always uh, going against. OK, the next one I wanted to show was code snippets. Get rid of my views here. Code snippets are similar to toad views, 
but they really are about smaller snippets of code that is inside uh, your SQL. So um, we come with a whole batch of code, of code snippets, uh, for example, on how to do comment statements and date and time functions, and this one is specific to Teradata. If I were to go into my Oracle system, my code snippets would be you know, the Oracle syntax that I can use here. And all of this is really great when you're actually doing um, you know, uh, editing and you want to know how to do a format model. You can just drag and drop this stuff in here and we'll drag it and drop it into your editor. Very helpful. But one of the things, the hidden gems of code snippets, is that you can actually create your own. So you can actually create your own code snippets and import them into the system. So if there is um, a format of, a, of something that you're used to using and you want to share with your environment, you can actually create it inside the code snippet environment here um, and, and create your own code snippets and then use those to drag and drop into the editor. And there's a whole section that I told you on how to create your own code snippets. And so basically you're making your own library of functions that you can reference with inside uh, your, your SQL and that you can also share with other data point users in your environment. Okay. Another one that I wanted to mention was SQL Recall. And I love SQL Recall. So SQL Recall gives me a list of all of the select statements that I've done for um, I, I'm, I'm an almost unlimited amount of time. And I can go back into any one of these, and I can double click uh, any one of these. Here's my heterogeneous query, and bring that up again in the editor. So I can access any one of the old queries that I've been doing. And there's actually settings in, um, in your tools and options about how far back you want to be able to go with SQL Recall. But it, if you're like most analysts and you're developing SQL queries, and you're slowly tweaking them over time, and then at some point you want to get back to where you were, but you haven't saved that specifically, you can always turn in, um, into SQL Recall and get back to your old SQL statements. And again, for more information on that, there's great information on Toad World on SQL Recall. Another little hidden gem that I love is under Options, Tools, Options, and it's Auto Replace. So in our Options environment, it's under the Editor, and it's an Auto Replace. Auto Replace is a great uh, system um, if you want to really put some time into um, customizing your environment. Oh, I think they put under level storage. Um, we'll do it here under this Oracle environment. So if you want to create a, a new uh, auto replace, let's say whenever I type SEL, I want the system to type select for me. And whenever I type uh, FR, I want the system to type from for me. Um, and we'll just do WH where. Now I'm using it for the SQL syntax itself, but you can use it for your table names or any kind of standards that you want to enforce. And what that does is it gives me this time saving of when I'm now in my Oracle system and I get rid of this. And I type SEL, it's going to finish that for me. And this is the auto uh, complete piece here as well. So from contact, select, here's the fields that I want. So you can still, even though I'm an editor, I'm getting tons of help from the system. You know, contact ID is greater than whatever. So really, you can actually speed up your typing if you use that auto replace and you put the energy into capturing sort of your standard phrases. And I personally think that that sort of phrase capturing where you can create your own shorthand. Um, is one of the, the most productive things that I've ever done on my desktop. I definitely use it in Toad data point all the time, um, but I also have, just as an aside, I have a phrase express on my desktop, which is just a little widget tool where I can use that for all of my emails and bird docs and anything that I'm writing, sort of in those standard writing systems. Um, it's really great. Uh, I feel like people use acronyms way too much, and I can take an acronym that I use, like, TDP for to a data point, I can place it in my phrase express and when I type TDP it puts out the full to a data point, uh, which I feel sometimes is a little bit more um, generous with my audience so they don't have to remember all the acronyms I do. So anyway, that's just an aside about your desktop. But inside to a data point, the auto replace I think is really a great investment because it's a great time saver. Um, and then last but certainly not least um, on the sort of hidden gems, I wanted to talk about um, the, uh, let's find a good one here, 
Okay. The compare. We have two kinds of compare in, in the system. One is uh, comparing data across different systems, and that's under tools uh, compare, data compare. And this is a great tool if you want to compare data from you know, your uh, test environment, your dev environment, your production environment. You want to compare the data in the same table across those environments to see the differences. You could potentially even sync up to either the target or the source at the end of that um, if you wanted to. It's a great uh, tool that you can use. You can also compare uh, you know, similar tables across different platforms to see how the data has changed as it's moved across platforms and the data types change and things like that. And there's a lot about data compare um, on the Toad World website or in the data point documentation. And there's great videos out there for it. I'm not going to jump into that. What I am going to talk about a little bit, just because uh, I think this is a hidden gem sometimes, is when I'm running a query, as I change this query and I continually run it and refine it, what happens on my results tab is I actually get different results that, uh, and while well, I retain the old ones. So visually, here's what's happening. This is the first time I ran the query. This is the second time I ran the query. This is the third time I ran the query. And this is happening in, in any query um, queries that I'm running within the system. So if I'm running queries on this tab, and I have results that um, I have them here. And what I have the ability to do is right mouse click compare to, I can take this result set here which is part of my Query Builder Untitled 6 tab, set 3. And I can compare it to any other set that I have open in my environment right now. So I can certainly compare this to set 2 and set 1 to see the differences. Or I can compare this to um, sets that are in other editors. And what it's going to do is allow me to pick what my um, comparison keys should be, and then give me a screen which shows me you know, what's in set one that's not in set two, what's in set two that's not in set one, where are they, the, the, um, the rows are there, but the values are different. It's going to give me all of that information that I can view on screen or I can either save off as a PDF report. Um, incredibly helpful when you're trying to figure out how a where clause or how a join has affected what you're doing. Um, so I think that's a real productivity uh, hidden gem inside data point as well. So those are all the hidden gems that I wanted to cover in uh, super fast within the system. And again, more information about those in the help, in the PDF if you want to email me or on Toad World. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to talk about a couple of quick things about organization. I think sometimes when you're running super fast and you have a lot of tasks to do, you can overlook how spending time getting organized is really going to help you save time in the long run. In the long run. You think that you're putting aside an organizational task and is getting you to the end of, or getting you to completion on all these things coming into your inbox quicker. But really, if you take aside, uh, set aside time to get organized, it's really going to add um, time savings to each and everything, everything you do thereafter. So I just wanted to mention three things inside data point and help you organize your work. Um, the one is super simple, but I also think it's super um, helpful is color coding. So each one of these uh, connections over here on my uh, left-hand side, I can color code. So I can go out here and add, let's say this is my production system. This is my production system, but this is a uh, test system. And these categories are ones that I've created that I can assign and move around at will. So they could be about projects. They could be about you know, test versus production. They could be about a lot of different things. And so it gives me this nice color coding on the left, which I think is nice. What's also, I think, really nice is it gives me the color coding on the tabs. So if you have a lot of tabs open, and it's hard for you to navigate through them, you can color code them here. Let's get rid of some of these, Oops. Get rid of some of these guys, just so we can see in the, in the um, system sharing. And see, oops, and see the, uh, how it affects all of the different tabs you're working on. So if you want to know which one is your Oracle system, it's the yellow versus the red. I think that's really helpful when you've got a lot of tabs open and you're doing a lot of things. There's also this little button here on the right, which gives me a list of all of the different windows I have open, because sometimes you can lose track of how many tabs you have open. And if they're color coded, you're going to see the color coding here as well. So color coding, really simple concept, but I think it's going to be really powerful when you apply it in this sort of a uniform way. Um, the other one is this project manager. 
You know, a lot of folks uh, explore this, as, or at least not as many as I think should. It's a great way to organize um, all of the things that you're working on in your projects. And so this is just a sample project where I've created three folders, diagrams, queries, and reports. I could have really used anything. And I can just simply save what I worked on into that project. So if this was a query that I wanted to save, I could go here, add this to project, uh, give it a name. You want to save the results with it? Sure. And now here I'm going to have this test one. And so if I have different projects that I'm working on, I can create new projects, open projects. And you can add lots of things to projects as well. You can even add a to-do list, which is just from inside the project, which tells you, here's my weekly things I need to do within this project. So I think using the project manager is a great time saver uh, that people should take advantage of more often. Um, and then lastly, just wanted to mention that you can fully customize this environment. Um, there's all sorts of different ways, options and customizations, and we even have a configuration wizard. So if you're used to using or you like how Microsoft Management Studio, how the hotkeys work, how um, the tree list look, you can actually organize data points in that same kind of way. Or if you're like SQL Navigator or Microsoft Query Analyzer, you can do that. Or you can customize it completely. So taking the time to customize your environment, um, things like do you want to see all of your items in a, in a tree view? Do you want to see them in a tab view? How do you want everything to show up for you? I think it's really worthwhile because as you're zooming through your projects and your data, the last thing you want to do is adjust yourself to a tool. It's much better to have a tool that will adjust to how you want to work. So that was my last tip, uh, and hopefully that was helpful. Uh, we'll take a last few minutes here and open it up uh, for any questions that have come in. Um, that you guys have wanted to ask. And while we're looking at the questions out here, um, just really quickly I wanted to remind you that if you email me at julie.kleinman at software.dell.com, I will email you the, the PDF tips and tricks which covers this and more on data points. Let me see. Pull out my data section here so I can see this. So Julie, we have one question from Aditya Prahawada, which is, can the data cleanse capability be an automation script that you can run as part of another automation similar to merging of data from different data sources? Yes, you can. I think um, the transformation and cleanse works really well as part of automation. So it is an artifact that you can save, and then you can add to, an, uh, to, your, uh, to your automation scripts. Thank you. We had another question from Rosalind Wade who asked about um, Toad data point, uh, to Toad Teradata support. Um, I'm assuming she is asking about um, Toad database management, and the, she asked if it would work seamlessly with Teradata. Um, I thought I'd ask you and see if um, you could answer that question for us. We actually have a lot of our customers who have bought Toad data points simply to use it uh, as sort of a tone for Teradata, if you will. Um, because you can manage your Teradata environment from Toad data point. Um, and you know, different customers have different experiences with the, the sort of native Teradata management system. Um, but if that's something that you uh, don't particularly like, uh, we have, I do have uh, some pretty good customers that are big customers that have uh, bought, you know, over 100 seats of data points just so they can manage their data, their data environment. It is a native connector, uh, and so you should you have access to all of the Teradata objects. Um, so the best way to kind of add, um, to, to get used to that or to take a look at it is to grab the trial. If you grab the trial version, you should be able to connect to your Teradata system, and you're going to see very quickly all the objects that you can explore and what you can uh, do with it. Great. And then uh, two more questions that just came in is, if they have Toad Oracle, will the license allow them to use Toad Data Point? So up until um, uh, last year, last summer, uh, 2012, yes. So Toad Data Point used to be called Toad for Data Analysts. That was what it was originally titled when it first came out. Um, and for the first, I think, four or five years that it was out, if you bought Toad for Oracle, your Toad Oracle key would open up Toad for Data Analysts and you could use it. Uh, you didn't actually get the apps that you were given a copy of Toad for Data Analysts, but you were allowed to use it. It was a free use clause. Um, with the re uh, release of Toad uh, Data Point 3.2, which, um, which followed Toad for Data Analysts 3.1, so that was in August, 
uh, that no longer is the case. Uh, so you're, if you have a Toad for Oracle key, you can use up to Toad for Data Analyst 3.1. It has a lot of the same functionality I showed, just not all of it. Um, but you just can't upgrade to 3.2 and beyond or anything labeled to a data point. Um, okay, thank you. And of course, you know, if you're interested in, in data point, as uh, Julie had mentioned before, there are trials that are online for at, um, at the Dell software site. Uh, we have one final question from uh, Jimmy George who says, how can we get the Excel and all those on the panel? At the moment, I have only access over there. So what the panel will show is what you set up. So, for example, if I didn't have any Excel stuff uh, set up here, it wouldn't show it. Um, so to get Excel there, you simply need to create a connector. So you use this little button here, you can go file new connector, pick a group, pick your Excel, pick your Excel file, and connect. And, oops, I guess I did that one already. Um, when, and once you connect, you're going to see it over here on the left-hand uh, side of your panel here. Um, so you connect to one, and then you'll be able to see it. And the same goes with all the rest. So you won't have a blank uh, Teradata uh, holder. You'll only have Teradata show up as a group if you've added a Teradata connector, and the same for the others. Any other questions? No, I think that looks like that's uh, all the questions we have for today. So thank you, Julie, for a very informative presentation, and thank you to everyone for attending today's Modern Analyst webinar. I wanted to point out the webinar, along with the slides, will be archived at modernanalyst.com within a few days. This concludes today's event, and we hope you have a great day.